Bohm, and welcome back to a, another episode of Seminole Sideline 365. We are in the midst of a little summer break, uh, like many of you, going to the beach, working, travel, whatever you may be doing. We've done a little bit of that, because frankly, I don't really care about July commitments, and it's nice to have a little break, but obviously working a lot during the summer, but... You know, we're, we're starting to get back in the swing of things. We're less than 60 days till Florida State football. We're all excited. And it's time to get back in the swing of things. It's time for us to get back here and do what we do. Um, we're glad to have you. Thanks for being here. If you haven't already, uh, subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing more weekly videos, weekly commentary. We're excited to be back. And tonight, we're going to do a little summer recap, high school commitments, basketball news, a little bit of uh, exciting news. Uh depending on the way you look at it on that we'll get end. Into that. Uh, and uh, some transfer news uh, that I think we need to look at because some sites haven't really been carrying it. And um, I'm kind of getting worried about some of that transfer news. So we'll break down those three things uh, and then maybe dive into other uh, interesting topics. So let's, old man, let's get into it. I don't want to get into some big recap. Let's, let's get Wait right a minute. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on there. Hold on there. There we go. What about my new shades? I, I don't what? know why you're wearing shades in the at night. You but, know why? Uh, I, you know I'm why? I'm sure you'll tell us. I'm you know why? Because it's cool. You know where I got oh, these? It's nice. nice. Now, now, I didn't get these from my cataract doctor, even though the guy said you should have cataracts done. You're you're over the you're over the borderline. But you know, I'm still playing softball at this age, and I can still see the damn ball. So as long as I can see the ball coming at my head, I don't think I need the surgery yet. But look at these. These are cool. You know where I got these? Off that new site. Tamu. Tamu. You ever heard of Tamu? T what is it called? Yeah, the one that steals your information more than Amazon does. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Who cares? Yeah. You're, you're you right. know, that stuff is overblown. Everybody's got your information anyways. I got these F off Tamu for like a dollar. Look at these things. <laughs> I don't know why you would do these that. These gotta be as good as the ones you buy down in the Bahamas and the Caribbean. You know, when you get off the ship and they go, Hey, you want some sunglasses? You know? But pretty cool, you know? Do you think All I right. look cool? No. Uh but moving on. They're not they're not as big as the one Bobby Bound used to have. I I, I wonder if I have it. <laughs> these are like Jimbo. These are Jimbo glasses. Oh, that, those are better. Oh, I've got those better. big ones. I've got yeah, those big marshals. Bobby Bound had the uh Bobby Brown had the solar shields. Uh, no, he actually had some cool ones when he uh, toward the end of his tenure. He had uh, yeah. he had the uh, the big ones, but uh, no, but they're getting had, paid. They're getting paid. I don't know Bobby. to where. Oh, Bobby had, Bobby had some cool ones. Everything. Nice ones. Hey, <laughs> look at those. Those are like mine. Yes, look, nice you tell me the difference. <laughs> no, I got the Bobby Brown sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice Official, one. and you know what? Maybe we'll raffle these off someday. Yeah, that's a nice one. Huh? Look, it's got it's got the highlights on the side. Look, is that cool? It's yeah, blue. It's like, got some. No, it's black. It's wait, not, here, here, blue. do the side by. You can do the side by yeah. side comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Figure out how to get you up there. Where did I go? I don't took, know how to get you up there. You took me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there I am. I don't know how to get you up there. Um, there it is. There it is. Look. Yeah, same thing, buddy. <laughs> same thing. All right. Anyway, anyway. Uh, technically, hey, I don't need crazy. these on now. Um. But there we go. So uh, sorry for the, the brief distraction there. We're, like I said, it's been a while. We're getting back in the swing of things. But we have some things to talk about. So over the summer, we've seen some summer commitments come through. Florida State's been hosting camps. Obviously, they're trying to build up the 2024 recruiting class. And uh, they've had some success there. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to be frank with you. I really don't care about July commitments. What do you mean you don't care? Yeah, I know. Breaking news. Um, <laughs> some Florida State fans don't care about July commitments. Obviously, okay. I don't care well, about July commitments because yeah. of a certain number of things. Because one, NIL swings the you know can swing commitments. You no, know, in previous years, commitments meant something, but they really didn't. You know, until they signed the piece of paper, kid ain't coming to Kansas. I mean, either way, you know, they're high. They're 16, 17, 18 year olds you're talking to here, right? They don't know what they want to do the next day, much less uh, in six months from now. Even though they may give you a commitment. Kids are, are putting top fives out, not just for the schools they want to go to, to the high schools they're going to play football for now. Like, and you're saying you're going to be excited for a kid who's committing to your school a thousand percent in July when he doesn't have to sign till December at the earliest. I, I you know, it, it's good, you know, it's cool, momentum, you get the, but it doesn't mean anything, right? And, and that's why I don't 
follow it as much as I used to, especially now in the era of NIL when money can swing the momentum in some schools' favor. And we haven't even played football games yet, right? And, and, and that's why I, 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 I can't get excited for it anymore. And I'm not saying, you you know, if people do get excited, you know, good for them. I, I, I'm not going to hate you for that. But I personally am not going to report on I'm not going to get committed to it, right? I mean, if that kid sent his paperwork and was like, I'm, I'm done, I'm doing it. I get more excited if a guy says, I'm shutting down my recruitment. I'm not taking any more visits. I'm done. I'm fully, uh, you know, uh, recruiting for Florida State now. Most kids won't do that. A few will, and I and I will get excited for those kids. But I'm not going to get excited for a kid in July who's going to go then take five, ten more visits over the course of the season. And I'm not hating on that kid for doing that either. It's a big decision for him. But it just, I, I can't get excited for it. Am I wrong? Do you feel differently than that? I just, I just can't get excited for it. You know, we don't, we don't always agree on a lot of things, on different things, and and we tell it like it is, no sugar, and we give our opinions. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna be your wingman a little bit on this one. I don't. I I kind of agree. I'm not into the commitment thing because you know I heard some buzzwords today and I wrote them down somewhere. Shit, I can't even find them now. Great preparation for the show. No, I no. I got a lot of stuff written down. Yeah, yeah. got a lot of yeah, stuff. Exactly, exactly but no, this is what I heard. This is what I heard. Some other media sites talking about when they used the word. We landed a big one today. Landed. We, we got a huge commitment, huge, huge, huge commitment today. Uh, uh, we, we booked this guy. But you're, you're exactly right. And we've said this before, and I've said it before. Yeah, yeah. A commitment today is not like it was 50 years ago, okay? When people, their word was their bond. Commitment today means almost absolutely nothing which this team has learned and this program has learned. So when media hypes a commitment, don't think, as the casual fan, don't think that that guy's on campus and he's going to be playing in the 2024 season. He's going to be on the team. And don't it doesn't it, mean that. And it doesn't mean that just because he puts a 1,000% committed that he's like... Yeah, he, well, you know, that's how what... How many times have we lost... Uh, don't look back just to Travis Hunter. Up yeah. until the day, we thought day he was of. coming. Day of the, the day, day of. before, yeah, we thought yeah, he was yeah. coming. And it, then he left the next day because yeah, yeah. NIL, what, whatever it was, was involved. And he left us hanging that door along with another player. I, I can't right. forget. So, so I, I'm going to take your back on this one. However, when you said there, these kids change your mind, we're talking to these kids. Well, you're also talking not only to the kids. You're talking to parents, sometimes grandparents, okay. sometimes an agent that they've already – started to get a relationship with you know so there's multiple layers now and a commitment has no legal binding for oh, yeah. a kid to a to to any campus and then the flip side of it too what if coach atkins leaves towards what if he gets a job offer in november december and leaves the program you just saw you just landed this kid right here you know, Jonathan uh, Daniels, it, which was Daniels, announced today, which is broke a big today. Thing, and I'll say for uh, offensive line yeah. in the first of your yeah. class or twenty twenty four. Yeah, he loves Coach Atkins. If Coach Atkins, probably one of the top assistants in the country right now, decides to leave in November, this kid's probably going with him. So that's why I can't get excited about this because staff changes, Florida State goes, you know, eight win. There's so many intrinsic factors, both on the kids' side in terms of him getting recruited, visiting other places, and then the staff sides, that this commitment doesn't mean No, you're anything. right. No, you're right? you're no, you're exactly right. Because a kid like this thinking down the line, down the line, that look at and the first I, guy I, tagged, I'll tell you right now. The first I'll, guy he tagged was Coach Atkins. Look, coach Atkins <laughs> leaves to go head coach somewhere else, this kid's going with him. Let me let me let, and let me tell you this. If Florida State well, Florida State's gonna have a good year, period. Now, is it going to be an ACC championship year? I hope so. I hope they. I hope they are. I hope they do. Could it be a potential outside chance to pl in the national playoff? Could be. Could be if they have an exceptional year. In any case, whether it's just a good year or any of the other two ACC or playoffs, I'm telling you right now. You can write it down. Coach Atkins is gone. And, He's and not going to be here another year. And that's and the thing. 
He's not back. going to be here. Nobody's saying that, but I'll say it, and I'm sure you'll back me on this if, if you don't believe it. Well, and you may not believe it. Coach Atkins is not going to stay in this position any longer. He'll be Toby's, gone. It, not yeah. to, well, I, I, was, I'm just Adam making a prediction. To hold on to his assistance for a very long time, but you have to pay up. You well, have to be willing well, to pay up. You got to pay up. You're going to have to increase the pay and or the right situation doesn't occur for yeah. Coach Atkins. Yeah. But everybody knows his name. Everybody knows he's a good recruiter. And here's what I fear the most for 2024 is his departure, not only taking commitments for 2024, but taking other guys that are already in the offensive line room with him yep. in the transfer portal. Because he's one of the top recruiters on this team by because. Far. Because this FSU team is going to be look totally different in 2024. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a great point. That's and, and once again, this goes full circle of why I can't get excited. It's not just for the kids and their visits. And, well, and, we're not excited. Like, we're nervous. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it's nervous, and that's just I just can't. Yeah. You know, no, I just can't right. get excited because there's just so many factors from right. July okay. to December that can happen. Okay. Like, but today, you know, but today we'll celebrate. Yeah. It's today we'll celebrate the four or five star, whichever you care to look at, whatever service. Uh, Twenty four seven Sports has him as the number five inside offensive lineman and number 104 overall in the class of recruits across the country. On three has him as the number eight offensive lineman, number 47 overall. That's a big swing, number yeah. 47 compared to 104. I mean, these, the serv I'll say, but the I'm not, I'll say. I, these services, and they're, they're just okay, subjective care. opinions. Okay, That's all they are. That. I don't care about that. I don't care about those things. I don't, I don't care. much either. Okay, but the thing I care about, I don't care if he's number five, ten, whatever. The thing I care about is who you're going against to recruit these kids, though. The, the last few weeks, Florida State has picked up some commitments, some three high three-star, low four-star guys. But who are they winning these battles against for, like, Miami, Florida, no, uh, it's a large winning the state. I don't care about no. I don't want to win battles against Miami and Florida. I do. Yeah, you but got to. I want to win the battles against Georgia. That's when I know this program is headed in the right direction. And so yeah, but we're not going to win a lot of those battles right now. You but every not. but this every, battle was one. You won this battle against Kentucky and Georgia. That's a big win in my eyes. You took a kid like this, which I believe is a in-state kid. He's a Pensacola kid. He's yeah, Pensacola a Pine Forest kid. High School. And that's why I'm, this is a win in my eyes. The last couple of weeks, you you got some. Uh, ups, high upside kids, you know, they weren't looking at Alabama or maybe Georgia. The kid from Ohio State, Elijah Moore, that's a good pickup. That's a big school that you took away from Ohio State. That's a big one in my eyes. This one is two. You got a kid to stay in state and kept on and beat one of the battle head to head against Georgia. These are the wins I care about. I don't care if you're winning a head to head battle against Miami because you should be winning those battles right now. But keeping a kid in state and not letting them go to Georgia, that is a win right now. The reason that's a win right now is because you're only half of your talent is coming from the state of Florida right now. Only half. You, know, of it. you look at the state uh, instead of pretty. Uh, I got you. Percent is it right I, now? I got Three, you, but but you don't want to say eight. you don't want to say you're not going to win the recruiting battle in your own state. You have to win the recruiting battle in your state and then in surrounding states nationally. Okay, but you can't. You can't lose the state because that just is a no. historical but, thing but you I, have to do. It's bragging is, rights and everything okay, else. I, I get that. But I, I don't care for getting a three-star against Miami and Florida. What I keep my tra my eye on if I'm looking at recruiting battles in July is are we going to be able to win the battles taking a, a couple of kids away from Georgia? Uh, uh, of course. Bama, Na like national, that. national, that's national what, yes. team. That's why yeah. I know we're trending in the right direction again. Because right. in the previous right. years – we're fighting for three stars against Miami, Florida, you, you know, UCF, uh, you know, Kentucky, stuff like that. When we're we're able to steal a couple of these guys away because they're seeing the direction this program's going, then I know we're back. Because when we were in the prime Jimbo era, we were taking those guys. We were head to head fighting for with Clemson, we were Bama, Clemson, whoever. We we could pick a guy and say we're going to be in a top three battle for that kid. That's yeah, let's, where, that's when we know we're back again. Okay, that's let's. That's right. I think I and I agree with you on that point. We're still in a building phase. We we had we had one good season, very good season, because when you get excited about one season, that means you've been down for so yeah. for a good while. 
So we've had a good season and now we must build on that. And that is what the hype is going into this current season of 2023. But I agree with you that you're, you're nationally wrestling to get these recruits. Okay, so, uh, and let me say again, uh, so this Jonathan Daniels is a big get. It's a big get for the program, big get for Atkins and for Novell, uh, Norvell. He's 6'3", 280, and uh, he's got room to grow. So he's going to grow into a 300-pound offensive interior lineman. Offensive tackle could move to play guard, depending what they want him for. Now, another guy that they locked up, uh, D.D. Holmes. He's a... Uh, 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 an edge rusher, an edge rusher, projected as an edge rusher out of Gonzaga High School in Washington, D.C. That goes to what you're saying. They went all the way up to the to a high part of ACC country and snagged uh, Mr. Holmes. So he looks like a, a very good uh, pickup but this uh, is, up there. Okay. And, and historically, when Florida State was in its prime, Virginia Beach, Virginia, D.C. area, they did very well. And they, they got did. the guys they wanted out of they did because there was a prime did. player. And Ohio State programs like they they picked the guys that they want out of that region, which is well because Bobby Bowden when Bobby Bowden and Jimbo Fisher they could go nationally. Yeah. yeah, they could go nationally and get whoever they pretty much wanted uh, in the heyday. Now another guy we got a five star tight end Landon Thomas. We got a four star uh, Elijah Moore out of Good Counsel in Maryland. So they went up there and plucked two guys out of the D.C. area, which is pretty good. And then they got the four-star Luca uh, uh, uh quarterback, and Cam Davis. So they've got some. They've got some dudes. Well, this they've, is, uh, they've, it, it, they've yeah, got Luke's some dudes. Be a stud. Elijah Moore was the one I was talking about earlier. Yeah, got, this, yeah, and he's like a said, stud. These are the battles. These are the battles I talk about when you're beating out Ohio State and Penn State for a game. Right. Player. Once again, right. you got to get him to sign in December. But these are the battles I watch and I care about. This is a guy. Yeah from good counsel, like you mentioned, who could be a stud? Who Ohio State won? Ohio State is a wide receiver factory right now. This is a, a big win for Ron Dugans, and this is something we'll be talking about in the future shows, is that is, you know, Ron, I thought, was going to be fired a season or two ago, right? I think most of the fans did. When we couldn't <laughs> you certainly receivers. did. You we didn't certainly have any did. receivers to save our life, and now it seems like we do again. Yeah. Um, that we certainly and did. we'll talk about that in a future but show. Here. These, are, these are the battles that I care about, right? I don't care, you know, and I just had the player up when we beat South Carolina Rutgers. Good. I hope that player turns out well. But these are the, when we win these battles consistently and we say we want Elijah Moore and he picks us and then he signs a paper in December, that's when I know we are on the way back. And if we can do that consistently season as a season, we will be become another, a top 10 power again. These are the battles that we're starting to get more and more in because of the momentum we're building. I'm happy to see that. I'm yeah, happy. I I think you're right on that. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to track these four and five star commitments, guys who say, I'm in, I'm in the boat, man. And, and we'll see, we're going to track these moving forward to see how many, what percentage do we maintain? What percentage do we maintain? I find that interesting. Because, you, yeah. because a commitment today doesn't mean anything. When you say we landed a guy and so on, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, and you can be. Well, happy I, I don't want to say it happy. doesn't. I don't want to say it doesn't mean anything. It does mean something. It means Maybe you can his win a battle in July, but he closed the deal in December. That's correct. Maybe his parents say, "Don't commit to you're willing to," and the parents make a guy go for it. Here's one other factor, and then we're going to move on off this commitment thing. Is, uh, is a commitment, a commitment today, just it has some meaning, but it doesn't have as much. You know why? Because a guy knows now he can he can fulfill that commitment, come in for a year, and then jump in the portal, right? Yeah. If 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 it's not working, I can jump in the portal. Years ago, when you signed for a scholarship, that was it. You were kind of in. It was harder to get out. So well, and, and that too, and we've talked about this on old shows, is that. Yeah. Just Florida State, like being at the table with some of these battles for four or five star guys is so important too. Because even if you miss out on a top 100 player in your second or third place, that may come full circle around again to you. So that is why it's so important and, and great that Florida State is now at the table fighting for kids 
against Alabama, against Penn State, against Clemson. Whereas two or three years ago, they weren't. They're still fighting for right. mid-tier three-star well, uh, players because now this thing can come full circle where a guy who's not getting playing time maybe at Georgia, like the you know Jermaine Thomas, they're you know they're not Jones, getting playing Johnson, time. Jermaine yeah. Jones, Jermaine Johnson. Johnson, he's not getting playing time anymore. He's highly rate or recruited, doesn't get playing time because he's stacked in depth chart. Now he want you know has a relationship, wants to transfer. That's an example. I don't think there was an existing relationship with Norvell, but that's an example. You come up in second or third place in the recruiting battle for a high four-star, five-star. That, that's where it comes into play, like you said, the transfer. You know, I, I think one other comment, and then we'll move we'll move on to the rest of the summer catch-up news, uh, it is, is that I think Norvell and the Florida State football program and the, peop, and the people behind the scenes you don't hear a lot about are doing one hell of a job in creating the family environment, the recruit environment when they come in. They're paying attention to detail, and you just said it yourself. If the kid doesn't sign here, they'll stay in touch with him. Yeah, yeah. The, the, there's reasons to stay in touch because they know a lot of these kids won't play someplace else potentially or won't like how they're being handled. And guess what? Ring, ring, they may come right back to yeah. us. I absolutely believe what you said. and I believe Mike Tornavell has created a culture – of competition, authenticity, um, and, and, and connection. I, I, and, I and, and for that reason, this is a good transition to the next item, which is Coach Norvell is now on the Dodd Trophy preseason watch list for Coach of the Year. Okay, He's one of 21 coaches. That's a pretty good honor to be nominated. It's like being nominated for an Academy Award. You're in the top 21. So the hype and the tension and the anxiety is continuing to build on this Florida State program uh, going into the season. So hats off to Coach Norvell, his entire staff, everybody behind the scenes because it's not a one-man deal, okay? For him to be on that watch list, that is a nice honor to put on your resume, Coach. So uh, that's an item I had. Now, let's move. let's move to the trash dump fire called men's basketball program. Oh, uh, well, okay. We don't go into that. I, I had some, okay. We can yeah, go let's go that. into so, that. Yeah. We'll just flip around yeah, a little bit. So, so as we all know, Florida, you know, Florida state basketball is a dumpster fire. There has been no real uh, changes. Well, there has been no changes to this coaching staff, I should say outside, you know, coach, a head coach still there, Leonard Hamilton is still at the helm. You've had a lot of attrition within the program and losing your top your star three players. Playmakers. Yeah, top three scorers with the team. Um, you brought some transfers in, nothing to the caliber of what you lost, uh, which is the issue. Um, and, and you've had some off the field troubles, uh, which has come to a head in the offseason. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. well, okay, let, let's start. Yeah, let's start with the trouble. Well, well, let's, let's start with the, the recent trouble. Well, the trouble that the only one I'm aware of, maybe you're aware of someone else, sophomore guard Chandler Jackson. Yeah, so okay, Jackson, he's yeah. suspended in def, in def, and he was he was slated to really compete for a, for a, almost a starting uh, a starting slot. He uh, he averaged three point six points uh, last year, one point three rebounds, twelve minutes a game, shot forty percent from the field, but his minutes increased as the season went along. And we've been very weak at the guard position now for several seasons. So they thought this kid would be able to take on that role with more minutes and really make a difference. Now, is he a kid that's going to win you a national championship? Absolutely not. He's not that caliber. However, uh, for, a, for a team that's in the dumpster, you need a guy like this. So I don't know what happened. Nobody knows. There's been no official announcements. I haven't seen anything on the news at all. Do have well, you? Well, no. I was going to say this is this is a kid that you expect in the second year to step up. He was a top 120 player, four star caliber player, big big guard, six four, and six, six five, he, six four. Yeah. yeah, he he had a number of college off, oh, high, you know, big offers. So no, this is a kid that going into his sophomore year that you would expect to make the second year jump. 
And now to have him suspended definitely when you're losing a ton of playmakers. Yeah, it's another loss. Is a, is a huge, huge loss. So I wouldn't understate what this loss means to you. I, I, um, I didn't mean to understate, but he's not going to take you to an ACC title. He's not going to take you to a national championship. And that's what this program is. It needs to focus on. And I've been hammering away on that on Twitter. I'm sure uh, Mike Alford kind of understands who I am at this point. But I'm just saying, I'm not trying to be nasty to players, coaches, the program. I'm an alumni. I want the best for this program. And But you can't, you can't have this dumpster fire continue. And I've said, I think Mike Alford is hanging on to the last, I think it's the last year of the contract. Am I correct? Uh, for Leonard Hamilton? For Coach Hamilton, yeah. Yeah, I believe yeah, so. It's, I think it's his last year of the contract. And I think then Leonard Hamilton will retire or move further into the administration somehow. But this can't, this cannot continue. Well, just, and just as a reminder, recruits State know it. lost six players to the portal. They brought in three. One, two of them, Primo Spears from Georgetown, being sort of, I would say, the best of the batch, you could maybe say, I would say, yeah, I would say Primo Spears is probably the best of the batch. But keep in mind, you lost Matthew Cleveland, probably top top 15, top 20 in the ACC player, to your, your biggest rival, Miami. He yeah. literally went down south to your yeah. biggest rival. So, so much for that Miami. commitment. So much for that commitment. That's how bad it's gotten that yeah, you yeah, lost your bad. best player yeah. to this, your rival. This team and is And also, gonna... Jeremiah uh, Benbury, who – Probably could have been your starting point guard because of, of you know Cleveland leaving, um, or Cleveland student. But he went to West Virginia. He just committed to West Virginia. They don't even have a coach. Huggins <laughs> was suspended for drunk driving slash racial slurs. They don't even have a coach, and he's committed there. That's yeah. how bad this is. Yeah, this is like, this this is going to be an ugly season. Attendance is going to drop badly. I'm not sure what Mike Alford's decision making is on this, except I'm not going to buy him. I'm not going to fire him because it may cost me more money than sit on this for a year and and and, and just play it out. It's going to be a team below 500. It's not going to win the ACC, and it's not going to make the national dance, in yeah. my opinion. And I'll eat crow six, if I'm wrong. You lost six. You won nine games last season. You went from, what, 25 wins two seasons ago to nine wins and you losing all these players. players you lost six players you only replaced and you had plenty of open playing time yeah and you're 51st in the transfer of portal ranking mm -hmm. leonard hamilton said said he messed up last season by not bringing in the right players he obviously wasn't either didn't learn from this past season or he wasn't able to this season because he messed up so badly that nobody wants to play for a nine win season or they just don't want to play for this game and, and you know what you don't see any what, I don't want to say hype. That's the wrong word. You don't see kind of any mention of men's basketball uh, from the official channel, Seminoles.com. I saw an article. They showed how uh, so we, we beat somebody in the last minute bit, and I tweeted out on that. I said, is this the best? I want updates on how we're going to rebuild and refire this program. I don't care about one win by one point on the final second. I, I, that's an old memory. That was a terrible season. And so, yes, we're ranting and raving because we care about this program. And, and this program should be as good as football, should be good as, as uh, 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 ladies softball, and the excellence that we're looking for. But we haven't planned any excellence to date on this program. Yeah, it, it's, it's that. And, and up to, I think, the last, last five or six years, Florida State was one of the was producing consistently some of the most draft picks, and they just didn't really capitalize it, which is the sad. Part. No, we didn't they, capitalize. They didn't capitalize yeah. it on it, and now look where you are. You can yeah, it's not a trending. You cannot. It's sad. It's, it's not it's a sad. trending program. If if our viewers disagree with what we're saying, now if you want to fact check us, whatever, do your thing. But if you have a, an opinion, drop an opinion. Okay, we're, so, we're willing to air those opinions out with you and, and on the air if necessary. So, uh, yeah, so enough on that. That program is a dumpster fire, and it's not getting any better. There's no fire department coming to this one that I could see. 
Mike Alford is the only guy who can put that fire out. And he's got to put the same effort he puts into football, into basketball. And, and, and softball and, yeah. and other yeah. other sports that we're excelling in. Golf, we're excelling in. You know? So, and then speaking of transfers, since we're, we were on that topic yeah, of basketball, yeah. um, what is going on with Daryl Jackson? Uh, <laughs> and should we be concerned at this point? So, once again, NCAA is a shadow government organization. We don't know what's going on. And at this point... You know, the last update we heard from Mike Norvell was in May, and he said that he understands you know, the NCAA has to do the process. You know, he's here, and they're there to answer all the NCAA's questions. And he hopes to have this wrapped up by, by the summer, late summer. Well, you know, we're, we're almost at the end of July, getting into August. Camp's going to start up. First game is, you know, early, you know, September 3rd, I think. We're getting close, and Daryl Jackson is going to be slated to be right behind Brandon Fisk, most likely, um, if not starting ahead of him. You know, should we be concerned at this point that we don't know his status? Is it is it a concern? Is it is it not a concern? Maybe because you have Brandon Fisk, or Brandon Fisk is coming off a shoulder surgery, right, or shoulder injury. So, would it be better to have Daryl Jackson? Of course, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, but you have you have a good amount of depth on the line. You know, you brought in uh, Gilbert Edmond. You you know, as an end, you have Jane. Like, you have got pieces you can probably move around. You got Pat but behind Payton. Brandon Fisk if, if for a tackle. You have Lovett, Fisk, Dennis Briggs, Joshua Farmer. If you could, you know, if you could Payton play could that play and inside Malcolm Ray. And Malcolm yeah. Ray. Yeah. So you have some bodies in there, but I think Daryl Draxon, skill wise is probably that one of the top three that you want to play in there. So Well, you want to see if he can perform in there. We don't know how he's going to perform. We well, think I mean, he has the Miami. potential. No, the bottom line is this. The bottom line is this. What the hell is the NCAA doing? This investigation is taking as long as the Hunter Biden laptop investigation by the FBI. You know what? You know who a lot of, listen to this. You know who a lot of the investigators are for like the NCAA and stuff? They're ex FBI guys. That's that's they're ex FBI investigators. So hey, maybe there's a connection there. But it makes no sense. When did Daryl Jack? Didn't this take place like last? How long has this been going on? Several months. How many questions could there be? Could there be in an investigation on a medical waiver for this? Come on, it's ridiculous. It's outrageous. Yeah, it's I don't, outrageous. I they, don't get why. Would I don't get it. Now, I suppose there are things going back and forth from the NCAA to Florida State and back and forth a little bit that we're, we're not knowledgeable about. They're not going to release, obviously. But I think it smells bad if it's taking this long to resolve about a medical issue with family and whether he should be transferred in to be able to play this season, it, I don't know how long it could take well, to answer I, those questions. But that's the biggest thing. I, I think it's more Florida State has to fight for him to be able to be eligible. I think the defense I think they're for fighting him. for it. Well, yeah, what what else can you do? The fault would be for him to be not eligible because he, it's three schools in three years. I mean, and he's and not it, a graduate transfer. And he's not a graduate right. transfer. No, no, no. So I, yeah, Mike Alford, Mike home. Alford, Mike Alford is a guy who has to ring, ring NCAA and say, "What, what is going on here? I don't understand." Is, yeah. is, is well, are you guys? I, 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 think, I think Florida State is maybe trying to work it to make it, you know, trying to fight to make it work. That that is my thing that they're trying to answer, KB KB provide more evidence. To KB. Get what like other it. evidence is either a I, I family medical know. issue or there isn't? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know the process. But it's like an insurance claim. It's kind of like a claim of you know, insurance. Oh they get back to you in three months and say it's approved or not. Yeah, it's I, ridiculous. Well, it's bad. You know what it's bad for? It's bad for the our program. It's bad for the kid, for Daryl Jackson. It's bad for his family. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And, I, and I agree. But I don't like the looks of it that is dragging on this long. And yes, he is a valued member of the defensive line room. He is needed in that room. But he shouldn't have to be thinking about the shadow of this. Make a decision and let's move forward. 
I agree. It's ridiculous. I was. I would assume we would. We're we're gonna know in the next thirty days. I mean, that's it. But it's it is. It, it's well, not. Su- it's surprising. They're gonna it's know. Also not surprising that it's they're gonna know. They're gonna know before camp starts. And I don't even know when camp starts. Do you? Well, they'll know, but we we they may not tell us before then. Well, if he's if he's not in camp, I guess he could go he to camp. Participate. He can go to camp, but it, it, the decision would have to come yeah. before the yeah. LSU game. Exactly. Okay, but they may not tell us. But I think the whole thing's ridiculous. I think you and I agree on that. Yeah, yeah. So you know? we've gone over time, but uh, yeah, that's the update. So some high school recruiting news, good things, good momentum heading into this weekend. I know there's some uh, big recruiting weekends coming up before fall camp. Uh, we went some basketball news, some bad news I've got, on that end. I've got one other thing. Oh, God, no, I got one other thing. Okay, so we're getting hyped. You know, you know, everybody's talking uh, playoffs and all of this. Well, the Vegas Vegas DraftKings has us behind, slightly behind Clemson now to win the ACC crown. Two four seven sports picks FSU. Uh, Vegas odds has LSU slightly ahead of FSU for the game on September the third. Well, so we'll discuss that whatever that means. Show. We'll discuss whatever that, that means. Show. I'm not yeah. going to talk about it now. <laughs> don't odds make change. it. Yeah, are you saying don't make any bets until the preview show? I mean that that those odds are going to change by the time we talk about it. If any news, come, if Daryl Jackson comes out as eligible, it'll change. Like those things. Or uh, or uh, a key player gets a yeah, DUI yeah, yeah, or something. Exactly. So, so, okay. All right, that's going to do it. Let us know in the comments. Do you disagree with anything we said? High score recruiting. Should we be amped up? Basketball. Are we going to win 25 games next season? NCAA. Do you love them? Do you think uh, this process is how it should take? Let us know in the comments. What, yes or no. Hate us, love us. Let us know. We'll see you all real soon. And, should, and should the old man wear his glasses like this? Glasses. No, please, no. All right. <laughs> see you all.